Keelan McNamara. Hi, Nathan. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Nathan, hi. Uh, first of all, welcome to Belfast. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so, Nathan, my first question is, you're obviously on a pretty brilliant run. You're on a nine-fight win streak at the moment, and your most recent appearances have come in the PFL. Um, my question for you is, with the takeover of Bellator by the PFL, um, have you thought about bouncing between the two companies in terms of rankings? Um, you know, you're very well ranked in PFL, you've, you're fighting here in Bellator now too. Are you interested in the idea of basically fighting everybody in both those companies? Um, like I'm open to it, but ultimately I'll just fight wherever they put me. I don't really have a plan to do one or the other. Essentially, obviously I've been with PFL initially for so long. Um, I would have just thought maybe I'd go back to to the PFL, but you know I'm open to open to options once once I'm fighting regularly. Um, and I have a steady flow of competition. I'm, I'm happy. So if that be on PFL or if that be on Bellator, you know, I'm, I'm happy with either one, just once I'm active and once I'm knocking out the fights. Absolutely. And speaking of fights and obviously your fight coming up on Friday night, as I mentioned, you're on a nine fight win streak. And if you're able to win on Friday night, that'll be 10 in a row. Um, do you have any plans in your next fight, maybe two fights, looking at potentially fighting for championship gold this year or next year? Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, you know, I think this year it'll be a bit of a stretch because, uh, you know, the season has already, you know, been 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 lined up with fighters. So I feel like that's, they already had their plan set for this year unless someone gets injured and I can jump in. But in my head, I would have liked to just fight two, two more fights this year. On, on either PFL or Bellator, um, that would be three fights this year, hopefully then be 12 wins in a row, and then I could really assess what happens next year with, with, with what's going on. Like This is my last fight in my contract at the moment this, this, this Friday, so I'll know more about what's, what's planned for me um, after this fight, and we can really discuss what, what's, the, what's the story. But for now, I'm just going to take this fight, beat him, and see what, see what happens next, you know what I mean? Sounds great, Nathan. Thanks for the time, and good luck on Friday night. Thanks very much, man. Appreciate it. Next one, Alexander. Something. French Alexander. Alexander Fuemengoy. Hi, do you hear me? How you doing? Yeah, uh, hi Nathan. I have one question. How do you see this fight in your opponent, Vikas Ruli? Sorry, say that again. How do you see this fight in your opponent, Vikas Ruli? How do I see the fight playing out? No, how do you prepare for this fight? Oh, how do I prepare? Um, I prepare it kind of the same way as I always prepare, just uh, training all my skills equally. Um, you know, really putting time into all, all of them equally to make sure they're all leveling up at the same rate. Um, I really see a lot of openings though on the on the feet and in the striking exchanges. So I feel like if there was ever a fight to get a knockout, a clean knockout, this is the one. And I really do feel like I can, I can knock this guy out if I if I really um time my shots correctly and you know make the right amount of angles and and let let me hands go without without hesitation. So. There's been a lot of work into just just preparing on the feet and anti wrestling takedowns because I feel like he's gonna want to take me down after I, I land a few clean shots. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Ronald Smith. This is Ronald Smith from Getting Real, Mr. Kelly. You just brought up that you, this is the last fight in your contract. Yeah. I'd like to know what risk do you put into this camp, knowing that because at any given time, anything can be stopped to make your to make your free agency look either better or weaker. So how do you get into the mindset during this time? Um, I just I never out of the mindset really. I've just been in the mindset for the last three four years of just rocking out fights, whether this pressure or not on me is another thing. But all I can do is control my performance on the night. And all the other stuff is kind of irrelevant in the background until it becomes relevant. So I really don't really think about it. I just really focus on what I can control, which is the fight. 
and then everything else will just hopefully fall into place then if if what I do on the night is 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 really good and and um and, and it impresses who who are who are in charge of the the, the company so yeah I don't I don't really think too much into it all I can do is prepare the best I can and you know take another head on the night and that's what I plan to do this Friday last question for me each fight came is each fight camp is different. So in this one, going into it, what is one motivation either someone you know or your coach has really stuck with you preparing for this fight? Um, I don't, I've put a good bit working with my boxing coach and he's been really, because I, I would have obviously came from a more of a grappling background and, and MMA background. So I've been doing a lot of pure boxing with my boxing coach lately and he's trying to, you know, really dig into my head that I'm actually a really, really top quality boxer. And just to have the confidence in myself to, to show that I am a top quality boxer and to, to transition it into my MMA game. So I'm really trying to, you know, come out in full flow this, this Friday and show that all the work I've been doing with him and all the trust he's been putting into me, you know, to develop me into this high-level striker is, is is all gone to plan. So I could say that's the main one for me personally, just to be relaxed and loose and to really let me shots go and not to worry about any of the finer things and just be confident on the night and, and show that I'm a force on the feet as well as on the ground. Good luck to your fight. Cheers, man. Thank you. Hey Nathan, I was just going to ask, what's it like uh, to share another card with Nate Kelly? I know you guys had a, a good little video before your last fight, sort of comparing uh, things, but he's come on well, and uh, what's your sort of thoughts on sharing the card with him again? Yeah, it's always nice, you know, Nate is like, Nate's been around SPG so long, He's like he was like the baby of the gym for so long, so, you know, it's really, it's really nice to see him get some good opportunities, and, you know, I'll always look out for him, and to be on the same cards as him again, you know, even this morning, we just done a little bit of training together in the training room. Just wanted to keep him busy and keep him occupied and going through his motions. So I, I really, I'm really happy for him that he's getting such a nice platform to show his skills because he is a very high level lad. He just needs to, you know, have the, the opportunities to show it. So yeah, I'm delighted for him. And uh, it's always a pleasure to share uh, a card with my teammates. Thank you. All the best on Friday. Thank you. What's going on, man? Thank you for the time. Uh, yep. One thing that a lot of people realize or maybe not picked up on yet, but ever since you joined the PFL, you've been able to stay very, very active, which is something that early in your career you were active, but it was a little bit more spotty. Uh, do you believe that the the activity has helped you become, you know, so dominant and help you stay on this win, tr uh, win streak? Yeah, I think it's a big part to play in success in life in general. Never mind just just fighting. Like if you're disciplined every day and you're throwing up every day and you're doing what needs to be done every day, you're probably gonna get to your goal quicker than the most others who are doing a half hour. So I think the fact that I'm throwing up the train every day, even after I win fights, I'm back to the gym the next week. So there's no time pissing about and 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 taking time off. So I think that's a big part to play. And then you get the fights out of the way, which is a big part of your growth. Because every time you fight, you're stepping into the into the lines then and getting out of the comfort zone. So you know that's a big part to play in in you growing as a fighter and doing it on the big stages under the bright lights. So that there's in itself shows a lot of resilience, shows a lot of composure, and then added on top of the the, the lessons and and all that jazz that you take from the fight will just help you improve way faster. And you know, I'm luckily I've had a lot of opportunities to fight. This gonna be my fifth fight in just over like two and a half years, and I think it's just gonna. Oh, sorry, it's gonna be like my ninth fight. Sorry, in just over two and a half years. So like that's that's maybe pushing three. So I'm trying to pick myself up a bit too much there. But I think it's about nine fights in just over three years. So I've been flat out, and you know, it's 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 plain to see that my progression has just gotten better and better because I've been uh, so consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, absolutely. It's been fun to watch. One last question for you. You're one of the handful of guys fighting out of SBG Ireland this week. I'm wondering how this fight camp, or I'm sorry, fight week compares to other ones when you have other guys from your team fighting on the card and you guys are able to cut weight, train together, etc. throughout the week. Yeah, it's always good. It's just nice to know your team are there. It's kind of has you kind of have that kind of like alpha kind of mindset when your team are around you. You know, you're you're always better in a pack than you are solo. Um, but I'm blessed enough to have fought on a lot of cards recently with my teammates. 
um, you know, bar one or two, obviously, but really blessed to have that opportunity to fight along with teammates. There's a good team spirit. You know, it's just nice to know that if we're all struggling with the weight cut, whatever it is, we're all like struggling together. And, you know, even though it's an individual sport, we're all doing it as one. And, and we've all helped each other prepare as one because at the end of the day, you know what I mean? If, we, if my teammates weren't showing up the training, I'd have no one to train with and I wouldn't be improving. So, yeah, it's great to be able to share the card with my teammates and, you know, fingers crossed, we can all get the wins that we deserve and, and we can really celebrate then um, on Friday night as, as, as a team then as well. Thank you, man. Thank you. How about that? Uh, hey, Nathan, thanks for the time. Um, you've been on a great run so far, but you lost your first two fights as a pro. Just uh, how hard was that for you at that time? And what do you think you did mentally to be able to, to turn the ship? Yeah, at the time, it was very hard because I was so young. You know what I mean? I think I turned pro when I just went 20, and I had a really good amateur career. I bought, fought the best lads in Ireland and the world, and I was I, like, I done really well. And I thought I, I was ready to take that step into the pro game and, you know, I didn't go on my way initially and, yeah, it was tough, you know what I mean? Like I said, I was young, I was kind of immature and, and all the stuff, I didn't really know how to deal with my mind and my emotions, you know what I mean? Because I was very young and I was kind of um, a bit um, naive to life, you'd say, so I took it very hard, but I think it just, like, I took a break from fighting for a while and... I think that was a big part to play in me, you know, getting over some of the mental battles that I had because I felt like uh, at the time I was a full-time manager of, of a supermarket as well as trying to balance my fighting career. So it was very hard to deal with. I feel like I was born in the candle out of both ends. So yeah, it, was, it was very hard for me to even regulate myself and my stress and my emotions at that time and, and, and even think. So in the time of Jordan COVID, I really... You know, I, I went deeper into myself and I, I really struggled a little bit more and I found that, you know, the lack of fighting was, was obviously the key to me going downhill. So then when I decided to come back, I decided to, uh, you know, kind of have a, like a rejuvenation of myself and a really new lease of life. And, you know, I really decided to, if I was going to do this, I was going to do it 100%. I was going to make sure to, to train adequately, to eat adequately, to rest adequately, you know what I mean, and do everything the right way. So I think maturity was a big part of play in me getting over some stuff. Um, obviously, some research and, you know, reading some books and how to deal with mind and uh, emotions and all that stuff that goes into psych psychology and stuff like that. But I definitely just say maturity was a lot. I felt like I was very naive and immature as, as a young pro. And I feel like the years I took off have really helped me become into this you know, kind of more mature, seasoned, uh, proud that I am now, you know what I mean? Even though I'm only getting started, I feel like I have so much experience at a high level and I'm really grateful for that. And, you know, it's, it's definitely taken me in the right direction. Too true. Appreciate you for sharing that. Thank you.